Columbia, Houston, we're just a little bit more than 15 minutes from your PAO event. Uh, we wanted to uh, give you a summary of the activities that are going on today to try to come up with a plan to get the hatch open. Ready to copy, Bill. Uh, yeah, Tom. Uh, uh, the first thing is, is uh, we've got a, as you can imagine, a large tiger team uh, taking a look at uh, at all the engineering. We're trying to assess uh, the uh, processing uh, for the hatch uh, at the Cape, and uh, uh, just trying to see if there anything uh, turns up when we talk to the uh, uh, technicians who did the work and looking at the paperwork. Uh, so we got uh, quite a few people over in Building Nine uh, today, over in the CCT, actually putting their hands on hardware and trying as much as anything else uh, to um, come up with, to duplicate the problem and look at some workarounds. Uh, they're going to get together tomorrow morning at an MET of 1016 uh, to basically summarize their, uh, summarize their plans. That'll be 6 o'clock local here. Uh, to be ready to meet with the MMT two hours later. That'll be at 1018 MET. Uh, based on the MET, uh, correction, the MMT's decision tomorrow, um, we'll have a go, no go for you for a flight day 12 uh, EVA, and that's, of course, tomorrow. Uh, some of the options we're looking at, uh, including some activities for today, uh, we'd like to do an additional RMS survey, and uh, the difference between this, and I'll give you more details when we get there, is that uh, we want to pause looking at each, uh, at each of the um, dogs and the mechanism and have you guys cycle the handle a couple of times and so we'll get a better feel for what motion the uh, linkage uh, uh, displays. And we like that view. Uh, Taco, you have a go for the next set of cycles. Okay, Bill. And that's a good camera position whenever you're ready to cycle. It work. Joining us now live from space, the crew of the Space Shuttle Columbia. Good to see you all. Uh, first question for Story Musgrave. Dr. Musgrave, uh, you have warned that NASA needs to start hustling saying the astronauts lack the necessary spacewalking experience and equipment. Uh, Dr. Musgrave, you must find this very frustrating, this jammed hatch, and does this throw the whole program uh, behind schedule even more? No, it doesn't, and the uh, hatch program is unrelated to the ways uh, that we develop spacewalks and prepare for them and attack the details early. My question is for Commander Rominger. You are the pilot of this shuttle mission, and of course all of Colorado is proud of you, and we have no doubt that there's probably a big hometown crowd watching you tonight from Del Norte. When you were growing up in Del Norte and later studying civil engineering at CSU, was it your ambition to be an astronaut? It actually was not. The, uh, my ambition to be an astronaut came after I left Colorado State and was a Navy fighter pilot. But from the time I was about four years to five years old, I'd gone flying with my father and developed my love for flying. So at that time, I did know I wanted to fly. Now back to the uh, back to the spacewalk. Uh, we just got word that NASA has uh, cleared you for another attempt tomorrow night. If you can get that uh, that hatch open, uh, what are you going to try to do? Have you been working on this all day? I'll let anyone answer. Yeah, the um, ground is working very hard. There are many talented, dedicated people working this problem, and they've come up with uh, several ideas that have to deal with problems like perhaps a structural misalignment or some uh, an issue with the coefficient of thermal expansion. Maybe warming up the hatch would be a good idea. And a number of these lines of uh, thought are being developed in parallel, and so 
We have been read up some of their ideas about uh, perhaps moving the hatch laterally as we rotate the handle, perhaps warming up the hatch uh, prior to the EVA. So there are many things that work in parallel, and we are, we are optimistic that we will get this hatch open. Dr. Jernigan, my question is for you. You are a veteran of three space flights, and this mission was supposed to have placed you in the pool of those with spacewalk experience, currently a group of only about 33. If the hatch problem can't be solved, what does this do to your chances? Do you go to the rear of the line in rotation, so to speak? Well, I would uh, certainly be interested in uh, doing a spacewalk on another flight. But again, I think that um, I think we'll work through this, and I think Tom and I will uh, will join those pool of folks who have had the privilege of walking in space. And I know that everyone is doing everything that they can to make that possible. Uh, we have been discussing this hatch problem with our crack engineering staff here at News 4, and they suggested that uh, you do what they always do, just give it a good whack. What do you think? <laughs> well, that certainly has crossed our minds a few times. Uh, Maybe when we get down to if we uh, apply all the other uh, techniques that we think might help it, uh, including the thermal conditioning of the hatch and maybe some lateral motion of it, we will certainly be pushing on that lever with all our strength if the ground gives us a go to do that. Good evening and, and happy Thanksgiving. There have been uh, some difficulties on this flight that you gradually seem to be overcoming. What is the status of, of Orpheus and Wake Shield? as well as the spacewalk? Well, Orpheus and Wakefield are two great success stories. Wakefield completed all of its science, and we now have it safely locked down into the payload bay at the end of the mission, ready to bring it home. And the reports we get from Orpheus Foz is that the science is coming through uh, right on schedule, and they're doing what they want to do. What is, what's happening with the spacewalk now? It, it, it sounds like there are different scenarios to, to get the hatch open. Well, that's right, and uh, we have a huge team of people on the ground, all the talented uh, folks in Houston and at the various contractors who helped build the shuttle, looking at how the hatch mechanisms work and possible ways that they might fail. And they're trying to work on a way that we can uh, uh, attack the problem from several different ways. One might be to heat up the hatch to uh, make the metal expand slightly, and maybe that will free a jam. So we're also looking at us applying uh, a simultaneous rotary force on the handle, plus pushing on the hatch in a certain direction to try to uh, uh, break it free when we uh, attempt uh, an EVA tomorrow. So we still have, uh, in our planned mission, five or six days left, and we have plenty of time to uh, handle that problem, we hope, successfully, and then complete our two EVAs. So we're pretty optimistic that we can uh, find a solution. Columbia, Mir, how do you read? Mir, Columbia, John, we hear you loud and clear. Oh, great, Ken. Well, you guys, how are you all doing? We understand we keep getting messages from all sorts of amateur radio operators about how your mission is going, so we've been following it. Talk to you. Well, it's great to talk to you, too. And uh, in particular, we were thinking about you yesterday on Thanksgiving. Uh, since Story has flown with you at Thanksgiving before, he mentioned it. Let him. I'll let him say a few words to you. Okay. Hey, John. Hey, my friend, Story. How are you doing? I do fine, John. Thinking about that. Uh, it was about seven years ago. We were up on Thanksgiving flying together, and at that time we were saying, boy, uh, we hope you and I get flying together again sometime, especially at Thanksgiving. And here we are, both of us flying on Thanksgiving. We're just different spaceships. Yeah, that's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. You've been up about two months now. You sound the same, John. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's great. <laughs> Sorry. It just gets better the more the time goes on. Space flight seems to treat you very well, John, as it always did. Oh, yeah. I hope everything's going real good for you guys. I understand you're thinking of landing next Thursday, and maybe you'll extend some. Hey, John, that's right. We're scheduled Thursday, and an extension is in the works. This is Kent Rominger just saying hi to you and wishing you a 
happy Thanksgiving and a happy trip. It sounds like the comm's getting ready. I'll pass the mic on. Thank you. Hey, John, this is Tom Jones wishing you well, and I hope you're enjoying a, uh, a little relaxing holiday here over the long weekend. Uh, we're pretty busy up here, though, but I know we're sharing one thing, and that's our enjoyment of the view of the Earth. You've talked to me a lot about that, and it's sure it's great to, to see, as always. So I, I look forward to your reflections on how the Earth looked to you over the, the change of seasons that you experienced. Okay, well, thanks, Tom. Hi, John. It's Tammy Jernigan. Happy Thanksgiving, and just wanted to wish you well on your incredible journey and hope you have a myriad of uh, fascinating experiences. Yeah. Well, you can talk some more, Tammy, if you'd like. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what about uh, the crew members? Uh, greeting for you, over. And greetings to you. Um, are you enjoying your journey? Tell it. Did you all hear the lie? You can't. Yes, we heard you. Thank you for the greeting. Tammy, I don't know whether you hear me or not, but right now we don't hear you. Uh, as soon as I think we are hearing you, I'll stop talking just in case you're hearing me. Um, but Valar and Sasha are here listening, and they wish you and the whole Mirror 22 crew here together with us, you guys a great flight. Like I said earlier, we've been following you on the ham radio net. Sorry, you guys didn't have a ham radio, so we could have talked a little bit. But anyway... We're getting the talk now. Over. Well, John, to the Mirror 22 crew, our fellow space travelers, we wish you all the best on this flight from the STS-80 crew. Over. Well, if we don't uh, get to hear any more from you because our comm period is ending in about 10 seconds, good luck to you. Good landing from the Mirror 22 crew. Goodbye, John. Thanks. Good to talk to you today.